Welcome to today's webinar, Getting the Information and Resources You Need for Child Care Recovery and Stabilization. As New Hampshire's child care system and programs transition from emergency to recovery and stabilization, providers will need information and resources in order to serve children and families in a safe, healthy environment. This is part of a webinar series, and it's our eighth session within this series. After today's webinar, we will be offering this series as recorded webinars versus live. Information regarding the next webinar will be provided at the beginning of each month through Child Care Aware of New Hampshire's e-news. We'd like to welcome you to this week's session. Please note that today's session is an hour and a half in length. Here are our speakers on today's call. They'll be providing you with a wealth of information and updates during this call. They are Joan Eisen, Director of PTAN, Dr. Rob Corso, Pyramid Model Consortium National Consultant, Deborah Nelson, Bureau Chief of the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration, Division of Economic and Housing Stability, Melissa Clement, Unit Chief of Child Care Licensing. Krisha Dubriel, Program Specialist at Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration. Teresa Peck, CCLU Supervisor for the Child Care Licensing Unit. Diane Chase, Assistant Bureau Chief of the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration. Um, Emma Heath will be taking questions. She's the Administrative Assistant from the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration through the Preschool Development Grant, University of New Hampshire, and the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services. And I am your host, Stephanie Therian, with Southern New Hampshire Services, Child Care Aware of New Hampshire. Here's our agenda for today. During our time together, we'll be providing you with information on the pyramid model with Joan and Rob. Um, we'll be providing you with the DEHS update with Deborah, and with updates on the New Hampshire Connections Information System. Melissa will also provide an update on child care learning licensing, and I will provide an update on Child Care Aware of New Hampshire programming, and then we'll close with questions from Emma. We're going to start right now with the PTAN Director, Joan Eisen, and the Pyramid Model Consortium National Consultant, Rob Corso. Welcome, Joan and Rob. Thank you, Stephanie. Thanks, Stephanie. Well, thanks for the invitation to be a part of the webinar. Um, uh, I'm excited to be able to share um, uh, at least some of the moving parts um, that are happening in New Hampshire. Um, there's uh, such um, uh, a terrific amount of um, energy and projects and resources and activities happening um, that I take the whole hour and a half if I shared all of them here, but I did um, uh, want to take the time with Joan to at least highlight um, uh, a few that seemed most um, relevant on the, uh, the child care side of the house here. So um, New Hampshire is one of uh, 32 states that have a statewide leadership team. Um, the statewide leadership team started meeting just under four years ago now here. So um, we're coming up on the four year mark here. Um, the, the map you're looking at here uh, has a list of um, kind of two different shades of maps of, 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 of states here, the green, colored states are states that um, have been working with Pyramid Model um, and initiated under two federal grants that have subsequently ended. Um, the CEFL, the Center on Social Emotional Foundations for Early Learning Grant, and TAXI, the Tactical Assistance Center on Social Emotional Interventions um, uh, Project. Um, both of those ended about five years back, but the states in green have continued to work on Pyramid Model implementation. New Hampshire, along with seven, 16 other um, uh, states, and, and I guess I should add territories here with Guam, um, also having a leadership team here, um, have said um, uh, we want to do this and, and uh, uh, have come on board outside of any um, federal funding here to, to use um, state um, resources um, uh, and, and 
people's time and effort, several of which are presenters here, um, to to say what's this look like if we if we uh, get all of the systems, um, uh, child care, um, uh, Part C, home visiting, um, uh, Head Start, um, uh, school-based programs, um, uh, all moving in the same direction as we think about supporting young children's social emotional development, um, preventing um, challenging behavior and addressing uh, behavior concerns as they arise. So I wanna move us to the next slide here, Stephanie. Um, yeah, so thank you. Um, uh, at the end of the day, I um, uh, want folks to, to, to see Pyramid model as a systems endeavor here. Um, there are lots of trainings, and perhaps you've seen training opportunities um, come across your email. There'll be continue to be a lot of trainings that will be made available um, through all parts of the state here. Um, but it, at the end of the day, I um, want you to see it as a systems endeavor here where we're um, uh, striving to make deep change um, uh, at state level, community level, program level on, on how we're thinking about um, avoiding um, the train and, and, and uh, prey approach, but uh, that, that training fits into one of nine things we work on as we build a broad-based um, system in New Hampshire. All right, I'm gonna maybe, um, uh, Joan, I'll talk a little bit about this one and maybe let you talk a little about the state leadership team next here, if, if you will here, but um, the pyramid model is, is a public health approach, um, uh, basically um, uh, universal secondary and tertiary tiers. The blue part of the, the model is, what do we want for all kids in New Hampshire? We want all kids in New Hampshire to experience nurturing responsive relationships and to be in high, quality supportive environments, whether that's in a center-based uh, child care, family child care home, a Head Start program, um, a community-based program, their own home, right? So what we're striving for is all children in New Hampshire um, uh, are, are in um, good environments and getting nurturing responsive relationships. The middle of the pyramid um, talks about being intentional uh, uh, around supporting young children's social emotional skills. Um, especially in a time like the one we're living in now here. How do we, how are we intentionally supporting kids to express their emotions, to make friends, to um, uh, uh, control impulse and anger um, uh, and, and do so with all of the extra challenges that we're experiencing in the world now. It's not that these children have challenging behaviors. It's just that they're two or they're three or they're four. And we need to be intentional about teaching um, these social emotional skills. The top of the pyramid recognizes that that we need to be able to individualize for all all children to be successful. So, um, individualization of the the instructional strategies, whether it's because of behavior, dual language learning, disability, or just unique learning needs, that we want to build our programs and systems of support that all children are successful, and that means we're needing to be able to individualize. So that is the pyramid model. It is this um, this kind of tiered approach that says. We want you to spend most of your time being able to build relationships and helping kids navigate successfully their environment and want to make sure you're not in a space where you feel like your pyramid is inverted and challenging behavior is consuming 90% of your day and your time here. So, so the strategies and practices um, uh, are really around making sure um, that we spend the bulk of our time on universal things and, and, and not spend the bulk of our time uh, putting out fires. So the pyramid model, you want to hit the next part of that, Stephanie, um, is a framework, but it's also a collection of evidence-based practices. So um, uh, the, the different training and, and opportunities are going to be um, available to you around kind of universal secondary and tertiary supports here. Um, so see it first as a framework for how to build a system, and then second uh, as a collection of, of evidence-based practices of how do we actually teach kids to be friends. We can't just say be friends. If, if they knew how to be friends, they would probably be friends already here. So what are those, those evidence-based um, approaches that, that um, uh, help kids learn these social emotional skills? All right, I'm going to move us to the next slide here. So um, Joan, I'm going to toss it over here just to maybe talk a little bit about the state leadership team and um, these structures that we have. Sure. So, so as Rob has talked about um, the pyramid model as a state we have committed so the, I think we're the 28th uh, pyramid model state and that occurred about four years ago and when that happened 
that was a agreement among all of the people at the state level who touch the lives of young children and families as, as an agreement that we all go forward together. So folks who represent child care, preschool uh, special education, early sports and services, home visiting, Head Start, all of those people come together and agreed to move this forward four years ago and agreed to meet monthly and really sort of hash out the issues of what does it take to implement this sort of system statewide? Because we really want to be consistent. We want to offer people um, the opportunities, the resources that they need to be able to be an implementation site. So, so I serve as the facilitator of the state leadership team I have from the beginning and have um, seen the enormous effort that the state leadership team puts into setting the foundation to ensure that we can successfully implement pyramid model in the state. For uh, just for your clarification, if you're wondering like who's on it that's representing childcare, we actually have a lot of voices, which is awesome. Um, talking about the, the issues that are particularly relevant to childcare teachers and directors. Um, Deborah Nelson's on the state leadership team, Denise Martin, Stephanie Therian, representing Child Care Aware, and uh, Tracy Pond, rec representing Child Care Aware. And so we talk about every month um, the particular issues of the different groups and how to support implementation. Just one other mention about the state leadership team is that we have four work groups that um, come together. One addresses data and evaluation issues, one ad addresses implementation sites, one for uh, communication and PR, and one for professional development. State leadership team members are on that, as well as any interested um, folks from the field. And if this is a passion of yours and you're really interested in helping develop the state system, reach out. I would love to have add people to work groups that can bring their unique perspective and voice uh, to the development of pyramid model in the state. Anything to add, Rob? Yeah, I think I just add one more thing. As you see these other essential structures, we've we're worked to build our first master cadre so that New Hampshire has all of the um, pieces it needs internally um, to, to do all the parts of pyramid model. Um, and for day, today, I'd like to, to, to see um, um, you all as potential uh, partners who could be in the green box of implementation sites. Um, so if, if um, Little Frogs and Pollywogs Learning Center wanted to be a, a high fidelity implementation site, um, I have to say, I just wanted to say little frogs and pollywogs. <laughs> um, that, uh, that, that, that's an opportunity for New London and, and uh, Lisa's Family Daycare to, to be partners in this. And that, that's really we're trying to look for sites who are, who are saying we want to we wanna endeavor to, to do high quality systems work around social emotional development. So I want to shift a little bit. I'm going to move us to the next slide, Stephanie, of, of just some of the different pieces of, of, of work that's happening. Um, that I'm excited about and then share um, some re new resources that are available for free that I'm really excited about um, sharing with you here, but um, lots of different pots of money and New Hampshire supporting pyramid model work. Um, uh, the first is um, an initiative um, known as iSocial. Um, there's um, uh, several community collaboratives um, across the state um, that have a community orientation that, that really say these are our kids and as, as Coas County, um, um, we're, we want to figure out how to do this as a community here. Um, there's um, uh, at least eight, if, maybe, if not 10 childcare programs that are associated with those community collaboratives. And I see that continuing to grow um, uh, in, in communities like Manchester. I see Kim, you're on from Easter Seals, um, uh, that, that we're, we're having opportunities to continue to build out community orientation that support local sites, local childcare sites to be a part of it here. There's supports that come along with this. So you're not just um, uh, 
uh, signing up and saying good luck, but you have a, a process coach to help you with your um, implementation and, and a, a, a developing an implementation plan. There's um, heavy, heavy supports being built in around on, on site and virtual practice based coaching and then all of these professional development opportunities. So if you've seen something come across your email, there's a good chance it might have been coming through iSocial as there's, there's been a lot of work that's been happening through this particular pot of funding through the Department of Education. Another um, pot of funding that is happening, if you want to move us to the next slide, Stephanie, is um, coming through um, New Hampshire's preschool development grant, uh, birth to five here. Um, uh, that that master cadre that I alluded to that we were able to build in, in um, uh, New Hampshire um, this year um, came through funding from uh, the, this PDG um, grant. In addition, um, we just selected four new child care sites and I have a new um, cohort that will launch in the next few weeks uh, with funding from um, the preschool development grant. Um, uh, Stephanie, we have some of Stephanie's coordination time to help um, uh, make sure child care aware of New Hampshire is supporting um, as many different ways as we can um, uh, uh, pyramid model through um, the infrastructure that's that's a, a part of child care aware of New Hampshire. Um, as I mentioned real briefly here, we got um, some new funding that um, Launch Manchester got um, from um, the PDG grant that um, Easter Seals um, will be a um, important player on and um, and just some new opportunities that um, uh, related to some um, opportunities to join um, free peer learning groups to explore pyramid model content together here. Um, so I'm really, really um, supportive um, uh, to have lots of different um, parts of this here. I want to move us to the next slide. Um, what I'm really excited about is uh, the, the DHHS and the Department of Ed um, uh, with the support of um, Deborah and Krisha and, and folks at the Department of Ed have figured out how to make um, um, our online modules um, freely available to anyone in New Hampshire here. So um, we're going to use, you want to move us to the next slide, Stephanie, the infrastructure that perhaps many, if not all of you are familiar with here um, for other online training modules um, for health and safety um, uh, for other content areas um, through Pro Solutions. Um, if you go to prosolutionstraining.com and you say you're from New Hampshire, you want to click to the next screen, Stephanie, then you're going to show right up top these three, these actually nine courses. You're going to see right up top that you can access um, infant toddler course, a birth to five course, or a blended birth to five course that we really see for kind of family child care providers who might have a six month old, a two year old, a four year old, and a six year old that comes after school. Um, uh, um, all, all of them are kind of broke, broke down on mod one, mod two, mod three being um, uh, synced up with those, the tiers of the pyramid model. Mod one being universal, that blue level, mod two being the targeted social emotional strategies, that tier two level, and mod three being the top of the pyramid level. Uh, so next slide, Stephanie here. So all of these are now freely available. Um, in addition, we are working on um, trying to have some similar answers here for some companion modules um, uh, around culturally responsive care and implicit bias, um, as well as, next slide, Stephanie, as well as um, some slides on trauma-informed care and the pyramid model and staff wellness that, um, again, um, particularly relevant um, for the time we're living in right now here where making sure that um, adults are being cared for and that we're thoughtful around um, some of the uh, traumatic experiences that kids and families are going through, um, even more so today than, than maybe eight months ago here before the pandemic started. Um, so um, uh, just, I guess, know, know that those three main mods are available here and I'm working on um, trying to make these companion modules available um, at no cost as well. But um, they, they, they exist um, uh, in real time for you as, as resources to help um, as you're serving kids and families today. I'm going to pause. I don't know, Deborah, if you'd like to add anything or, or Krisha on the Pro Solutions work. Nope. Um, I think you covered it beautifully, Rob. We're just, we're just trying to figure out getting the money out and getting the modules, these new modules um, uploaded. So just, it'll take us a while because the state systems don't move as quickly as we would like them to sometimes. Perfect. Um, I, I just wanted to say one more word here, and Joan might be a great place for you to, to, to jump in right here too. Just 
Um, I, I, I think higher education, um, we're really working hard recognizing that, um, particularly for uh, com uh, community um, colleges here, that in a lot of places that may be where you're also getting um, some access to content here and working hard to make sure that um, pyramid model is built in to what um, you might experience in college courses, whether it's a two year or four year um, a college and we're not waiting for the workforce to um, uh, be, get through um, college or hope that what they're getting in their college courses or your college courses are, are um, uh, addressing um, the same strategies here. So Joan, anything you'd like to add specific to um, um, higher ed? Yeah, no, I, I agree, Rob, but I think just to tie it back to the pyramid model, when you looked at that initial um, graphic that Rob showed, and it, at the bottom of the pyramid is the effective workforce. And if we intend for people to be prepared to get into their career um, as a uh, child, early childhood child care teacher director, we need to prepare them. And so, gosh, for at least four or five years, we have had um, a PTAN IHE task force that has, over that time, become really focused on supporting higher education department chairs um, to think about infusing pyramid model content, evidence-based practices, really understanding the sort of the theory and the process of pyramid model into not only their coursework, but also their practicum experiences. So when students come out, as Rob said, either two or four year um, programs, they're prepared. They, they hit the ground running and they're ready to uh, work in a program that is an implementation site. So it's a win-win for both for both you know, those program directors who are implementation sites, you want staff coming into your program who are ready to do that work. So it's really exciting to see. Rob, was, Rob just joined our task force and um, was really pleased to see how far we have gotten already with pyramid model practices infused into our higher ed curriculum and practicum. Thanks, Joan. So what I'd like you to hear today is there's just lots of resources <laughs> that, are, that are happening as we speak and or will be continuing to happen. Um, training opportunities that are happening through Department of Ed that are open to all of you. The, the um, opportunities to think about um, uh, joining progressives around pyramid model that Stephanie is running through Child Care Ware in New Hampshire um, to explore the leadership, um, the systems work opportunities to think about becoming high fidelity implementation sites with us, partnering with us in community collaboratives or the state leadership team, um, resources that are available on, on pro solutions, um, uh, resources that are available in, in community college and, and four-year college coursework here. So um, uh, we, don't, we don't think it's a one size fits all. We wanna have a lot of different ways in for you to access the content. Um, uh, all of which hopefully have a, a free or, or low cost way in for, for you all. Can I add one more thing, Rob? Um, I just want to make that connection for most of the people on today's call know me through the P10 Child Care Inclusion Project. And so just to connect those two pieces for you, know that that continues. So this doesn't replace um, and it and they are very much connected, but when um, the child care inclusion project, which provides consultation and training to support your efforts to prevent expulsion and suspension of children who have very challenging behaviors, we have infused pyramid model practices, pyramid model processes in our consultation. So you'll often hear us talking about, you know, this being at a tier one versus a tier two. And so you're getting a lot of this content already through the consultation and the training that we provide. But just know Hillary Pinkowski, the, the P10 project assistant is on this call. We are still available. Please don't hesitate to call if you um, are struggling with a child um, with challenging behaviors, um, give us a call. We are happy to help. 
Terrific. Thanks, Joan. Not sure, Stephanie, how much time we have left? I think we went over our 15 minutes a little bit for questions now, or are you on to hold questions till the end? Oh, no, that's fine. Um, we can ask, Emma, are there any questions for Joan and Rob? Um, yes, there's actually only one question right now, and if any come later, I can always get them to you, Rob and Joan, via email, and we can post them on Child Care Aware. Um, but right now, uh, someone's wondering, as a program director of an early childhood site, so all ages, should they take the birth to five modules or both the infant and preschool or all three? What do you recommend? Yeah, I think if, if uh, they're all about 18 hours in length, so there, it's a time commitment. Um, and so um, where there is someone who's an infant toddler teacher provider, um, I would say stick to the age range. If you're, if you're working with three and four year olds, stick to the age range. Um, but it's it, it felt unrealistic for folks to do 36 hours. So um, if you're the director or if you are a provider who is working with um, infants, toddlers, and preschoolers here, the birth to five modules were, were created. Um, uh, just sort of acknowledging that 36 hours of online is probably more than most folks have time to devote. Um, so um, uh, I guess the now long answer is, for those who live in a particular age range, birth to three or, or, or preschool, I think it, you'll get more content. Obviously setting up the environment for a four month old is very different than a four year old. So um, uh, it, it's better to go into that age specific um, uh, bracket. If you're cutting across all age ranges, that's really what we, we really had the birth to five to just acknowledge um, uh, that that's still an 18 hour commitment. And that's, you know, that's a big chunk. Great, thank Rob, you. Rob, this is Deborah. Um, I, I wonder if either you or Joan could just take a second and talk about what people's reactions, um, experience with the modules are. I mean, we know online learning is hit or miss. You've got really high quality online learn, learning. You've got others, it's like, oh, I'm gonna fall asleep. But, but can you just share what you're hearing about how people are um, feeling and thinking and learning from the modules? Joan, you wanna, you wanna take that yeah. on? Yeah, because then it's not, I mean, you were the one awesome. that created They're them. awesome. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. That might be a little weird. <laughs> but um, I have both taken them all and talked with people. So I have these this, those two uh, experiences. And they're really well done. They're very engaging. Um, they are, you know, a live person talking with you. You see the person. They walk you through the content, and um, they're really well um, paced. So you're not doing two hours of sit down with listening to a droning voice. They're in bits. Um, each is like between six and 12 minutes long about. And so you can fit one in at a point where you have 10 minutes to just sit down and do that one. There are um, um, knowledge tests throughout that just kind of keep you on track of what you're processing. Are you making those connections? If not, back up, review it again. Um, we also have done uh, several uh, professional learning communities tied to the content. And many of you may have seen the emails that have gone out offering you to participate in a PLC, professional learning community. Those are awesome. If you have the opportunity to do it, we have found from our evaluations and just anecdotal feedback that people find having the opportunity to do the EMOD content on your own and then come to a facilitated professional learning community session really deepens the knowledge because you get to hear how other people are processing it. You get to hear how people are actually applying it. And you can start thinking about what does this content mean for me in my classroom? How am I going to use it? So that's a long way of saying we have had nothing but very positive feedback, people feeling like it's been hugely helpful, particularly when they go through the PLC. 
one last thing I want to add is when you complete the trainings, the completion record of your training will automatically be transferred over into your New Hampshire Professional Registry record on your training transcript if you are enrolled in the New Hampshire Professional Registry. So I just Which wanted to awesome. add that. Exactly. And when we do the PLCs, Hillary does it through the registry. So you are then getting training hours for both completing the module and participating in the PLC sessions. So it, it does offer a rich opportunity and um, quite a few PD hours. And I'm really excited that we're broadening access to these modules to our friends and colleagues. So it's not just early childhood professionals. It can be higher ed folks, it can be students, it can be foster providers, it can be early childhood mental health people. So this opportunity is going to be broadly available to help just saturate New Hampshire with this information cross-disciplinary and cross-perspective. So I'm very excited about that. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Joan and Rob. <clears throat> Next, we have Deborah Nelson from the Division of Economic Housing and Stability, Bureau Chief of the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration Office to discuss celebrating new beginnings. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you, Stephanie. And thank you, Rob and Joan, for setting the stage for the next segment of our discussion about celebrating new beginnings. Some of you are thinking, uh, are we at a point of celebration in the middle of a pandemic? Well, you know, I would say yes and no but we'll take it in increments as we walk through this together, these, these challenging times. But I, I love the segue that Robin Joan provided about you know, these new opportunities to you know, delve into how to be even better at providing social emotional support to our families and children. You know, that this is a new beginning where there's gonna be lots of access at no cost to people. So that's one example. And also I'm, I'm reminded as I thought about this topic today, that there are those of you out there um, that are participating as well as some of our friends on the panel that have had some new beginnings. Our very own Emma got married recently. And so our bureau had vicarious thrills listening about her, her socially distanced wedding. Um, and we're, I, we can't wait to see pictures. And then we have our Rob Corso who recently moved from the beautiful state of Colorado to the beautiful state of Montana. And that background that you see with that big beautiful stone fireplace, that's not a Zoom fake background. That's really his new place on his ranch. So we're just waiting for Rob to invite us all when we're done with COVID to go visit him on his ranch and ride horses and sit in front of that beautiful fireplace. So that said, um, today, Marty Ilg, who usually does the DEHS overview for us and an update is, un, is not available to join us, but a little part of her and certainly her heart is with us because she shared this picture of her brand new, now three week old grandson. So it's to just help remind us that life still brings us joy in the times of difficulty. And I'm forgetting his name, but it's, I, I remember it's a cute name. Does do any of our team remember this baby's name? Okay, sorry, Marty. But anyway, he's, he's adorable and just reminds us to, uh, to, to think about new life um, as we go forward. So many of you have heard it said that every end is a new beginning. And we know that big change in our lives is challenging. And the hardest of all are changes that are thrust upon us, like the pandemic. As opposed, uh, as opposed to those that we choose ourselves, like deciding to expand our programs to serve more children in our community, or deciding to become a pyramid model program to strengthen our practices around social emotional development. In nature, catastrophic change eventually leads to new growth and new beginnings and, and beauty. Next slide, please. So you're looking at Mount St. Helens in beautiful Oregon on the West Coast, um, which this Mount St. Helens is about 170 miles north of Eugene, where I lived for 10 years. Um, and it's just, it, they call it Oregon God's country because it's stunningly beautiful. And it's just, you know, it's, it's just amazing. I hope if you ever get a chance to visit that you will. So here's a, a perfect example on May 18th, 1980, uh, while I was living in Eugene, Mount St. Helens blew up. 
can you show the, the next uh, slide, please? So that day I went outside and I found volcanic ash all over my car, 172 miles south of the, of the volcano. And later, I wasn't, I think it was later that, I think it was July, I flew home to see my family in, in New England. And the pilot said over the intercom, hey, who wants to fly north to Portland and we can do due east instead of going straight east from Eugene and we can see the path of the Mount St. Ellen Ash. And we all went, we do, we do. So he turned the plane north and then he went east and we watched that ash pathway go all the way from Oregon through Idaho. It was absolutely stunning and just reminds us of the power of nature and natural events to really sort of blow up our lives as we know them. So um, we can have the next slide, please. So we know like with erupting volcanoes, our lives changed suddenly in March of 27, bringing stress and uncertainty to all of us. You running programs, us trying to be supportive at the state level. Um, and I, I love this, um, this cartoon. Um, I'm stressed, I'm a little stressed right now. Just turn around and leave quietly and no one gets hurt. And I think aside from the coffee, I would think that COVID's enough to make that person look like that. So, you know, the way there were so many questions that came with, with the advent of COVID. Uh, from your perspective, should I close or keep, or keep my doors open? What about safety? How will I pay the bills? What happens if my staff or the parents and children I serve get COVID? Where can I get masks and cleaning supplies? And on and on. And the, the questions just kept evolving as we all try to pivot and, and um, address this new challenge. May I have the next slide, please, Stephanie? So just like these pandas giving each other a booth boost during a difficult time where one, of, one alone isn't gonna quite make it up there, you all address this challenge head on, um, often with a little help from your friends. Um, so, just as child care, early childhood and after school providers always do, you reached out to each other and to us, the Bureau and the division to talk about your needs and your issues. You shared your ideas on how to navigate the problems and find innovative solutions. May I have the next slide, please? So as you pivoted to try to make, uh, find new ways to make things work, we did too. At DHHS, we devised a three-phase New Hampshire Child Care Recovery and Stabilization Program. And many of you may remember that the first phase was emergency response. It was, oh my gosh, pandemic, what are we gonna do? Phase two, as we got out of the initial shock was stabilization and recovery. And nobody ever expected it to go on as long as it has, but it, but it has. And then, but we see that even in the midst of catastrophe, like this little plant growing out of absolutely desolate um, ground there, you know, no one knows how that can happen, but there it is, a bright green spot in the, in the midst of desolation, um, just a very desolate environment, that we find ways to move forward as nature does. I have the next slide, please. And so the third phase after, so emergency response, stabilization, stabilization recovery, and building back even better with long-term sustainability and thriving is where we are now entering. And right now we kind of have our one foot in each phase, you know, going from ashes and, and devastation through the one little plant sticking up its little green head through the, through the um, desolate ground to, you know, ashes to um, beauty which is, so you're looking at, this is Mount St. Helens um, on the left at, um, on May uh, 20, May 20, um, excuse me, 1980. And here it is today in 2020. So nature finds a way and you do too, and we are working to do so as well. So um, I'd like to share just a few examples of the commitment of our Bureau and our division to making this journey with our own new beginnings, which we celebrate. Uh, first and foremost, which you're gonna hear from Krisha in a few minutes and Terry, is our new data system, which will be a game changer for us and for you in so many ways. We are just giddy with excitement about it. We can't wait to get it all together and get it all rolled out. Preschool Development Grant offers wonderful new opportunities. You heard some from Rob today around Pyramid Model 
but certainly provides us with a chance to strengthen our partnerships with schools and the Department of Education, as well as to advance our work with pyramid model, QIS, coaching, credentialing, kindergarten transition, and others that we haven't even begun to go down the road yet. And thirdly, we will use what we learned from the pandemic experience to shape our policies and target our funding. In addition to what you've shared with us through graciously answering our surveys and filling out applications to help us know the status of childcare and the state of the state around the issues uh, due to COVID, we also are seeing some national articles and some national spotlights on this issue. For example, some of you might have seen the NAEYC National Association for the Education of Young Children article, Child Care in Crisis, which took a snapshot of how many child care providers um, would, would be able to manage different amounts of, of time closed without further resources. It was really eye-opening. And then last night, I don't know if any of you had a chance to hop on um, a pre-publication look at Dr. Walter Gilliam's brand new hot off the presses, not even in the presses study, um, on COVID-19 transmission in U.S. childcare programs. But I only had time to sort of glance the, at the abstract and the, the key takeaways just in the abstract that, that they found in that very, very um, large study was that um, they were the first to report COVID-19 transmission risk in the U.S. in childcare programs. Nobody else had been able to do that yet. And all previous studies had had, you know, had a lot of limitations, like they had very low participation. But, but among those studies, um, it was suggested that young children are less likely to, to, to transmit COVID-19. Um, but there are no published studies of COVID-19 transmission in childcare. So that was the thrust of the study to take a look specifically at that and what are the risks. So the study goes on to say, that with considerable infection mitigation efforts in the US, in other words, all of that cleaning you're doing, all of those um, you know, checking temperatures, all of the strategies you've put in place, the social distancing are working because what they saw in this study is that exposure to childcare during the early months of the US pandemic was not associated with more risk of transmission of COVID-19 to providers. So that study, um, Mamie says, what study am I discussing? It's called COVID-19 Transmission in U.S. Child Care Programs. So I will send a, li a link um, as part of our, we'll put it in the, in the notes to both the NAEYC article and the, um, the brand new Walter Gilliam study. But the big news that just in the abstract, and I'm sure there's other really important information that was shared, um, is that, that they found very low risk of you, the providers, getting COVID-19 from the children that you're serving. So that was, that was a pretty important study. We also will be, um, we will be supporting efforts going forward as we celebrate the new beginnings, strengthening community connections through local collaboratives. Joan mentioned some of those e-learning collaboratives. Rob mentioned some as well. So pyramid model collaboratives, and our Child Care Aware of New Hampshire partner is extraordinary at you know, managing these collaboratives and bringing people together to learn together. So we will continue to support and strengthen collaboratives. We will also foster peer support through strategies such as local hubs. Um, local, local hubs you'll be hearing more and more about. That's when something, somebody, maybe a large um, child care center that's been around a long time, has a lot of experience, um, reaches, uh, it serves a, in a mentor role to, you know, emerging child care programs or maybe fa family child care programs in their area, and they share resources, they share expertise, and everybody moves forward together. So that is sort of a hub model. We will be looking into that. We will also be continuing to, we will continue to support career advancement and development of the workforce through TEACH the new uh, TEACH program, which I'm very excited to say is just launching um, through Child Care Aware and Southern New Hampshire Services. I heard from Tracy Pond yesterday that we have four people, um, four providers that are interested in becoming part of TEACH. We had one family child care provider and three, I think, was it center-based, Stephanie, um, folks that are, that are interested? I believe so. Yeah. 
and um, as well as the Department of Labor Apprenticeship Program to bring apprentices in and support them who are, can be your future teachers. And as well, we're looking at ways to expand um, scholarships and other support for professional development for all of you. And lastly, COVID-19 did for the childcare industry what Jack Shonkoff's Neurons to Neighborhood Brain Research did for raising awareness nationally or internationally of the impact of early childhood experiences on development, lifelong health, and well-being. That raised the bar so people could no longer avoid, you know, or, or dismiss the importance of learning when, you know, among babies, infants, toddlers, preschoolers, like some folks were want to do. Oh, they just stay home and, you know, they sit around and, you know, don't talk to us about early learning. You know, learning starts when they go to school. So nobody can say that anymore. Um, so along with the Neurons to Neighborhood, COVID-19 did for us you know, made, so it was a wake up call that could not be ignored around the critical importance of childcare and the early childhood industry to the very economy that, you know, exists within every state, as well as being essential to children and families. So there will be no more ignoring how high um, visibility that childcare and early childhood got due to COVID-19. So if there's a bright spot, then, you know, that we can, we can continue to carry that message forward around um, that importance and say, you know, the next time a funder says, well, you know, it's just childcare, it's just early childhood, we can say, oh, COVID-19, whole state can shut down without childcare, early brain development, you know, these are your future um, citizens and doctors and, and um, other folks in your community that'll be taking care of all of you later on. So no more ignoring this industry or this population. So um, as going forward, our Bureau is um, in the middle of planning for the new biennium budget. And we need to begin to think about our next three year child care and development fund plan and our next five year Head Start collaboration office plan all due in 2021. So we will intentionally incorporate the lessons learned from COVID as well as celebrate the growth and the new beginnings it precipitated. And thank you. And with that, um, I'll turn it back to you, Stephanie. Wow, thank you, Deborah. That was so heartening and inspiring. Um, thank you. Emma, are there any questions for Deborah? Um, the only question is from Mimi O'Connor and she's just wondering what the name of the study is. Yes, and we will put that in the notes with a link. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Unit Chief Melissa Clement from Child Care Licensing. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, thanks everyone who's spoken so far. This has been wonderful to hear all the nice, exciting things that are happening out there and what's being offered for providers. Um, I have a few updates from Child Care Licensing, um, a couple of reminders. One, um, I know I've said this before, but we're still getting questions about it, and I have another update. Um, just a reminder that background checks for staff who are needing to renew or for new staff that need to complete them, fingerprints are still not required as the emergency order is still in place deferring them until after the state of emergency has ended. But you can complete fingerprinting now if you choose to avoid needing to complete them once the state of emergency is over. If you choose not to complete them now, you still must complete all the other background checks, such as the check of the abuse and neglect registries and the in-state criminal. Go to our website for more information on that process. And with the fingerprinting starting again, state police shared with us that a number of childcare staff are not showing up for their appointments once they're made. Please share with your staff, it is important to keep these appointments. And if they cannot attend to call and cancel so that the state police can manage their schedules. Those appointment times are extremely important. So please make sure that they're being used appropriately. As much as, as, much as that, uh, that is under your control, please stress that with your staff. Um, and also I wanted to ask um, as a reminder that you are notifying child care licensing through our child care licensing unit office email, which I will put in the chat. 
if you have a suspected or confirmed case of COVID in your program, in addition to notifying public health, many of you are doing so, and we certainly appreciate that. Thank you for that. But it is helpful to know how it is impacting your program if you've had um, a suspected or a positive case, such as if you are closing, if you're only closing certain classrooms, and what public health has advised. Um, as we are conducting visits, it is helpful to be aware of what is happening so we can plan appropriately with our staff. So those are the two reminders that I have from child care licensing. Um, I, as I said, I will put the information in the chat. I'll put our website and I will put our um, office email in there so you have those resources available to you. Thank you. I hope everyone is doing well and you get a chance to enjoy the beautiful weather today. Thanks, Melissa. Um, Emma, are there any questions for Melissa? Uh, nope, not right now. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Krisha Dubriel, Program Specialist from the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration. Teresa Peck, Child Care Licensing uh, Supervisor for the Child Care Licensing Unit. And Diane Chase, Assistant Bureau Chief for the Bureau of Child Development and Head Start Collaboration. Welcome, Krisha, Teresa, and Diane. Hello, all. And I just wanted to pause one second, Emma. There was one question that came through at the last second, if you want to take that one for Melissa before we move yep, forward. One just came in, Melissa, right after we said that. Um, it's asked, they're asking when you say suspected cases, does this mean children that you know are being tested for COVID? Yes, if you know they're being tested because they had potential contact with someone who was positive, that, that's what we want to know because of their contact, not necessarily just because they're exhibiting cold symptoms, but if they're being asked to be tested because they had contact with someone who tested positive. Okay, thank you. So Stephanie, can you go forward one slide, please? Thank you. So I'm excited to be here this, um, this afternoon. And um, what I'm here for, along with Terry Peck, is to give you some updates on the development of our New Hampshire Connections Information System, which we were here last month on giving you some updates. Um, so our first, we've, we're releasing this system um, in multiple phases. The development of this system is, has started over this past summer and is moving through and ending up in end in December in the end of December. And so today we're going to give you a big overview of first what has been released and what is going to be released over in, in the next couple months, just so that you're aware of all of this. Um, here you can see what our vision, our mission here of the New Hampshire Connections Information System, where all families will find resources to make informed decisions about child care services that meet their needs. New Hampshire professionals, policymakers, and partners will use the system information to make data-driven decisions that improve professionalism and workforce quality to positively, positively impact children. You can move to the next slide, Stephanie. Thank you. So we have officially, we're excited to announce that we have officially released the first phase of our system. This is our child care search portal, which is available to families seeking child care or other early childhood and um, after school um, care for their, ch their children. This um, child care, and we're going to be showing you where it is, can be found on the um, New Hampshire Child Care Aware website at www.nh.childcareaware.org. When you go there, you um, go to that website, there's a big button that says Child Care Search. When you click on that button, it will bring you right to this website where it provides a very user-friendly, easy-to-navigate system for families um, and they are able to go and find out more information about your specific about your program. They can find information about um, the programs that are on their route from their home to their uh, um, office. They can put in a specific address and then it will give a radius of all the child care programs that are lo located in that area. So really it's a huge support for families. Um, and it really gives you an opportunity to highlight the unique program qualities that you have to offer families. So that's my next phase. There's two different phases of this child care search portal that were released. There was one phase for programs to log into our system. You have a um, 
private access, or I don't know if it's private, but access to your system, you'll be able to have, you'll have a unique login information. You log in and you're going to be able to update your specific program information. In that program information, it can include whether or not you're open due to, uh, or closed due to COVID, whether or not you are taking children at this time, you can provide your social media, your email to families, your contact information, you can provide um, hours of operation, age groups that um, if you have any available slots, and there's also other unique qualities that you are able to provide to families. There's specific um, information and I think it's important to note if you do not log in and update this information, you will always be part of the child care search for families. So your program will be included if you are a licensed program or if you are a licensed um, exempt pro program enrolled with us to accept child care scholarship, you will be part of that, refer that, that search portal um, in this. And that's a requirement for CCBF that including in there will be licensing history of, um, so families can do a research on your program. Um, so this is, you will always be included in there. However, you have an opportunity to market to families unique qualities about yourself. This, this portal is available 24 seven to families. You also have access 24 seven to update your information. You can go in, change it, and it saves right there in real time when you hit the save um, button. This is this feature is really one part of a multi-part system that we are building for um, for child care programs and child care. So um, I just want to make sure I'm going to give an opportunity here to really get allow you to see the actual child care search portal. But one of the things I want to bring up is over the past couple weeks, Child Care Aware has been reaching out to programs to assist in getting you access to this system. You most likely received a phone call from Child Care Aware asking you for your personal email address um, to help you to get access. And then you would follow up. That would be a follow after you talk to Child Care Aware. There was an email that you would have received, which would, would have been from Salesforce, because that is the the platform we're using to develop this system that would have included a URL link for you to click on and you to act to log in and create your account so that you can log into the system to update your information. If you have not gone through that process so that you can access the system, um, you can contact Child Care Aware and I have the contact information later on here down um, and they can help you through that process to getting your, you all set up into the account. We're definitely encouraging everybody to get in there and to access it. Again, I want to highlight and Terry's going to show us down the road here. This is just one part. So when you log into this, inf this system right now, there's only one little tile that's available and that is if you're a program director, you have access to this self portal to update your information. Down the road, there's going to more, be more tiles of, um, that are going to appear and you're going to be able to access more information. The last thing I want to share with you is the reason why we're asking you for your personal email address um, is this is really just to establish your username. When you log into the system, you can update all of your business information and include this as um, your business email to to give to families. Your personal email address will never be shared with families. The reason why we're using your personal email address is if ever you, this, this account is meant to travel with you no matter where you are. So if you leave the current program that you are in, you can take this account and you can move and go to wherever you um, move to into your new program and you will then still have access to the system and you will log into the system. So I just want to make sure you understand that. So you can switch to the next slide. And then one of the, th okay, so one of the things I, I think a few more updates before we click on this lovely video. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a message on my screen. Right, there we go. Um, is some of the things that this feature will also have, will be exciting to share is that this is going to replace Child Care Aware of New Hampshire's program update. So annually, actually I think you twice a year you receive um, emails or mailing from Child Care Aware of New Hampshire to give you um, to provide program update information. We are going to be now changing the process and this was just a discussion we had with Child Care Aware of New Hampshire this morning where you will be the program information update will be happening through this system. 
And so you will be able to, first of all, update at any time 24 seven, but Child Care Aware will still throughout the year be contacting you to help you through this process. They are over the next month or so are committed to contacting you to help you and to guide you through this process of updating your program information. Um, so if you do need some assistance, they are gonna be available for you. Um, there also are videos and user guides on how to go in and update the information. So you can, um, you can at, view those as well when you log into the system. So I'm gonna pause here. This video is a video of you being able to see what exactly a family experiences when they go in to do a childcare search and what this, this feature for families um, has for them and resources for them. So go ahead and watch the, go ahead and start the video, Stephanie. Hello and welcome to a personal video tour of a brand new resource for families and caregivers who are seeking childcare. Finding the best possible child care arrangement can be a difficult task for families and caregivers. Now, there's a solution. The New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services, DHHS, would like to introduce you to the new, easy to use, New Hampshire Child Care Search. The system will provide you with a list of options to best meet your needs based on customized information you supply. You now have a 360 degree view of a child care provider's profile. You'll find rich and comprehensive search capabilities, including advanced searches using a combination of parameters. Now you can rely on comprehensive, up to the minute information on choosing the right child care for your children. And now it's all in one place and available 24 7. On the home page of the New Hampshire Child Care Search, the information tabs here across the top of the page make navigating easy to find the specific information you want to find. And here you can see numerous search parameters that will help you as a family member or caregiver to locate and find the details of whatever information you choose. For example, if you know the name or part of the name of a specific child care program, you can search for it and locate it right here. Here's an example. We will type in a part of the name of a child care program and watch how the system immediately finds the closest matches. Not only can you search by name, but you can also search by city or zip code. We'll click on that here in the easy to use search filters. And you can also search for child care programs within a designated radius close to your home or place of work. You can filter by one mile, five miles, or whatever you choose. Then, the Nipshire Child Care Search immediately shows you all the child care programs within that radius. Enter a portion of your address of your home or workplace, and the system will automatically help you complete the address. Then, it will show you all the child care programs within the mileage you defined. Now, you can search for child care programs near your home, along your way to work, or other driving routes. You have the ability to control the proximity to the route. Multiple Google Maps API service integrations make it easy. Just click on the blue search button here to be able to view a map of where that child care program is located and convenient directions to the location as well. And you can sort and choose the number of programs you want to view on each page. Here, when you click on a particular child care program, you can easily find key information, such as hours of operation, licensing history, the age ranges of infants and children they serve, and how many they can accept. The contact information is included too to make it easy. You can click and go directly to a program's individual website to learn even more. And if you have other questions you'd like to have answered, you can enter your question or comment here by clicking on the email icon and then emailing the program directly. You will also find links to the program social media pages. By the way, what if you need to view a child care search in a language other than English? Well, you can translate the information into many different languages just by moving here to the top of the screen right here on the right at this icon. Watch what happens when we click here. Yes, instant translation for whoever needs it. The language translations feature offers 13 different languages through Google Translation API integration. The New Hampshire Child Care Search is fully compliant with the ADA, Americans with Disability Act, so everyone can find the child care information they need. 
Ready to start searching comprehensive, up-to-the-minute information for the best child care for your children? Just remember, you can sort and select the number of programs you want to view on each page. Of course, you can also print off the results anytime, day or night, that best fits your schedule. And if you'd like to view potential child care programs by a particular keyword, such as infants or preschool, you can do that here by clicking on the drop-down menu and viewing and selecting one of the options shown here. And if you want to create a spreadsheet of programs to compare, the Child Care Provider Search Results Download feature means you can even download a CSV or Comma Separated Value file to build your spreadsheet on your own. There are many factors to consider when seeking child care. On the right-hand side of the Child Care Search homepage here, you will find helpful resources and links to assist you in finding the best care arrangements for your child. Well, that completes your quick video tour of the brand new New Hampshire Child Care Search. Thank you for watching, and all the best to you and your family from the New Hampshire Department of Health and Human Services and the New Hampshire Child Care Search. Thank you. So this video is located right on the child care search page and families have access to this to help them navigate through the system but that provided you with an overview of what the this resource is for families and you can switch right to the next page and i want to address a question thank you linda for asking a question regarding who has access um, to the system it's important to understand this and this is where we're going to start to explain what's coming soon and this can give you a really um, broader overview so i'm going to address your question in just a second um, linda but to understand here this is what you will see and when you get your url and you access the system of um, new hampshire connections so you get your username and you get your password and you log in when this full this system is fully developed these are all of the tiles that i would call or doors that you are going to that you may have um, a bit permission to go through so all of these will not appear child care search child care profile that's the one where you are going to be updating your child care information for this child care search portal that you just saw there's that that tile is located in the lower left hand corner it's important to understand the people that the individual that will be granted access to that pot um, tile which we're controlling in the back as an admin so child care licensing or will, um, will be controlling this this tile. It is the individual that is listed on your chat your license at that time. And it's important to understand that and we are in the process of looking at if there's another designated person that potentially will update this particular tile, but that is something that we still, we need to make sure that we're limiting who can have access to that tile, because it is true. We need to make sure that that's protected. This is business information, so we only allow certain people. So if you are not that designated person, that tile will not appear in you when you log in. If you are that designated person, it will appear. Um, and Terry's gonna explain a little bit more in just a second. The next tile that you can see we're excited to announce is what you know as the New Hampshire Professional Registry. We're going to be getting a new updated version of the new uh, New Hampshire Professional Registry that's in the top left hand corner, as well as the training and credentialing. So those three tiles will appear no matter what, whoever you are when you log in. Professional registry really is for you to, that is where you store all of your professional information. Um, do you, kind of your, your online resume where you can store all of this information. You will be able to have access to your historical um, background with, with any trainings that you take through the system, as well as upload any um, trainings that you might take without outside of the system. You also will be able to track all of your education or any additional coursework that you take right here in this system. You will be able to track any kind of certificates that you have that you've earned and your employment will be able to be tracked in here as well. This will be able, what's nice about this feature is that you will be able to um, keep this all current and updated and then you can email this to directly. You can create a resume right from this and email directly to a program um, if you keep this all current. 
we will also be offering credentialing applications online. This is a very user friendly system where you'll be able to apply for a credential right online through the system, as well as sign up for trainings, enroll for trainings and register for trainings, just like you do now in the current registry system. This will be a new enhanced version of that um, where you'll be able to do all of that right there. You can see our future work will be QRIS, where we'll eventually have a QRIS system where you will be able to apply for our quality recognition improvement system. And so that is something that we have future plans to be building out. And I, so those are the three that I'm going to speak about today. I'm not going to give a lot of information because those are our next phases that we're going to be developing. The next phase that you'll be seeing rolled out will be the professional registry and the training tiles that will be coming soon. You can expect to see those probably sometime at the end of November. But as we move forward, we'll be giving you updates on what that is. This will replace the registry. And I think one of the questions I want to address, continue using the current registry system right now as you are. And all of that data will eventually, we call that the magic wand. That is why we hire developers. Your information will get transferred over into the new system. And that is some of the work that we're doing right now. So continue using the registry system as you always do. And when we switch over to the new system, all of that stuff somehow magically will get transferred over into the new system. And now I'm going to pass it on to Terry to have her explain the rest of the tiles that will be available in this system. Thanks, Krisha. Um, welcome, everybody. And I want to um, direct you to some of the other tiles that you see, which are more on the program level. So because we really needed to get the child care search feature out to the public as soon as possible, especially in light of COVID, we started from needing individual email addresses for the director so that they could have access to this. I think once the next phase comes through and you're enrolled in the professional registry, you're going to better understand how um, our overall vision for the whole system is going to work. So once you've got your account, as you know, right now as director, you can see the child care profile. Those um, child care licensing is updating directors as we um, go through changes and you're talking to child care aware and trying to set up an account. You may have had a director change, especially if your program is closed for a period of time. So no changes can be made or directors added until they've been approved through child care licensing. We do have an acting director role that we've um, instituted. So the person who is in place for that nine up to 90 days between when one director leaves and the other comes on board can have access to this portal because we want you to be able to update your program's information. Likewise, when a director leaves, as you know, in child care rule, you need to notify the department within 10 days. Once you notify that, us of that, we will sever that individual's connection to your portal. And then should they go to another program, then they could get access to that program. Meanwhile, they maintain access to their personal information from the registry credentialing and training that's coming up next. So next you'll start to see, after we roll out the registry and training, we'll be um, rolling out the background record checks. So the important part for the director of the program is they will have a listing of all their staff and their status of their background checks. Are they expiring soon? Have they expired? Um, are you waiting for an eligibility determination? And so forth. So that way there'll be a nice clean list and an easy way to keep track of all your staff you will also have the same for their professional development. Um, once we get the background record check piece up, it's also part of your personal registry. So you'll be able to go into your personal account and in, uh, start your background record check. It will go through and ask you if you actually need one. Do you need an eligibility card? What forms do you need to fill out? If you don't need a background record check because you've already been deemed eligible, your information can then be linked over to the program and they'll know that you're already eligible. We have a lot, a lot of people that are doing unnecessary background record checks. So this will hopefully help everybody in the field um, only get those checks done when they need them. And lastly, 
we will be adding licensing into this database system. So we're not 100% sure what that's going to look like yet, but it will actually provide a two-way communication tool, which is another reason why the director needs access to this part of the portal. So the directors will be able to see hopefully the results of their visit, uh, write their corrective action plans right within the portal, submit their application materials, be notified of when their application is due, if there's any documents that we're still waiting for, and those types of things. So hopefully um, that you can get a bigger picture of why we're setting up the accounts the way we are. Um, also, if you are a site coordinator for a school age program, you're gonna have multiple cards one for every program. There are some uh, larger umbrella programs that could have three to 18 after school programs and they would have access to all of those where they could update each of those and then check their background record checks in their professional development. So um, next slide. Okay and the lastly um, you know as always, Child Care Aware is here to help you with um, any questions that you have and assistance with getting access to the uh, portal and making sure that we have your proper email address. Your licensors will start asking that information right now as well. You can uh, email them, you may call them, and you can also use their live chat feature on their website to answer any of your questions. And just another reminder, the portal is mobile and PC friendly, and um, we hope that you can use it and uh, get all of your stuff updated and keep uh, everybody notified if you're open or closed due to COVID or if you're not enrolling new students or anything at this time. So thank you. Now I guess it's my turn. So I will be very fast so we can get to the questions. Um, I think all of you know me. I'm Diane Chase, the Assistant Bureau Chief, and um, I'm involved in a number of programs right now. Just going to give you the uh, sort of high-level updates, and uh, if you have any additional questions, you can either ask them, uh, put them in the chat, and I'll either answer them at the end of this session, or um, we will post them. Uh, quick update, CCRSP. Um, all of you are doing a great job of getting your invoices in and they are working as fast as they can in finance to get those dollars out to you. Um, we have uh, a new colleague, if you haven't met her, who's Tori Black. Um, and Tori is our CCRSP technical assistance specialist. So she can not only help you with processing those invoices, but as we get to the final report, um, or questions regarding what you can and cannot um, fund with the CTRSP dollars. Tori is your go-to person. Um, and we will make sure that um, if somebody could type Tori's email into the chat, but also we'll make sure that, we, um, that that's posted on Child Care Aware as well. Um, in addition to that, also I'm gonna ask Child Care Aware to post a new, um, uh, chart that uh, we've just created that is it's not an exhaustive list so it doesn't include everything but it's a really good guide on what is allowable and not allowable for the CCRSP money um, so I think that'll help a lot of you as you start to think about um, what you're going to be putting in your what I call your your records folder of what you spent your CCRSP award money on uh, NHEYP, for those of you who are participating in that, that's a middle school and high school program. Um, again, folks are doing a great job. They, unlike you CCRSP folks, had to get a federal SAMS number, which um, if I ever have to do a program that that's involved again, I uh, will, will grossly apologize in advance. It's a nightmare. They've been doing a terrific job. They're getting the SAMS number. If you're an NHEYP recipient and you are online uh, today, please know we want you to send in all your documents, even if you don't have your SAMS number, and that includes your invoices. And with CCRSP, same thing. Send in your invoices. Even if you haven't figured out how you're fully spending those dollars, it's not a reimbursement program. You put it in the account as long as you 
allocated and spent it by December 30th, you are good to go. Um, while you were on the uh, while you were on the call, you received an email from me announcing a new funding opportunity. The governor has given us an additional $10 million and in partnership with Early Learning New Hampshire, um, that money is going to be distributed um, on a need base um, formula. Uh, a little bit different than how we've done it before is first of all, Early Learning New Hampshire is going to be supporting the application completion. It's got two parts, worksheet and a, um, a three-part worksheet and um, a very short eight question uh, survey monkey application. Um, it is, it has gone out to your email. If you didn't receive it, I was just looking, I only got five email back for, for bad email addresses. So you should have it. Um, please read thoroughly the instructions before you do anything. This isn't a quick response. Now you are going to see that it has a pretty elaborate questions um, for your spread for, on the spreadsheet part of it, the worksheet. Um, these are things that are, are not only helping you look at what your need is in terms of what are your COVID related expenses and losses, but I will tell you almost that exact same form is part of your final report. So when you do this application and you have between now and November 6th to get that in, you will also um, be doing the yeoman's part of your uh, final report and all you'll have to do is update the numbers when you get to it. Again, don't please don't come to um, the DHHS team for questions about that particular program, the CCAS, um, the COVID-19 Child Care Assistance Supplement. You will see in your email, it tells you who to contact at ENLH about those questions. Next, workforce study. Um, the workforce study deadline has been extended until October 30th. Uh, please watch uh, Child Care Aware for some more information about um, how to get your customized link. If you don't already have one, you will be receiving a, um, a communication from, um, I believe we're going to do it through Child Care Aware, or it might be from me, I'll know later today. And that will be inquiring about, um, that'll be to directors inquiring about staff email addresses, because it has to be an individual link. And so we're going to resend into our provider, which is School Readiness, uh, who's doing the survey. We're going to resend those email addresses in so we make sure that every single one of you get a voice. Um, it is crucial that we get this information and that we, it is um, uh, part of this whole study because this is a snapshot of our workforce. The email. And, and if you haven't seen your email, and it would have been based on whatever address you had in your professional registry, um, please look for an email from Christina Rodriguez at School Readiness, I think it's School Readiness Consultants. Um, it's not a hoax, it's really us and, and they're really our contractor. Last but not least, the market rate survey. We are unfortunately required to do one more market survey, I believe, uh, not using the new system, but using the old paper system. Um, we're trying to see if possibly we can uh, get that changed uh, with our federal partners and be able to use our new database to pull that information, um, which obviously would require you to put that information in. If not, um, then we'll be mailing out the market rate survey for a, a final time. And then after um, this date, it'll be done in the uh, fancy new database. Aside from that, um, I think that is what we have to cover for today. Um, and last but not least, we will be offering what are called office hours or live chat in between now and um, the end of December on several occasions where you can pop on, ask questions around your CC RSP final report, spending and, and uh, things like that. Um, those will start in uh, probably about two weeks. We'll be posting those dates on Child Care Aware. Thanks. Thank you so much, um, Krisha and Terry and Diane for those updates. Before we get to your questions, I'm just going to give a brief update 
on uh, some of the services <clears throat> that we're offering through Southern New Hampshire Services Child Care Aware of New Hampshire. Um, as previously mentioned, Child Care Aware of New Hampshire are providing uh, technical assistance and support on the child care search portal, and we will be providing ongoing technical assistance on the New Hampshire Connections Information System. If you have questions, please reach out to us. We want to help you be successful in navigating the portal and overall system. Um, we were also awarded a contract to work in collaboration with the Department of Health and Human Services on administering the CCRSP in order to support the immediate need for childcare in response to COVID-19 while establishing a holistic, sustainable, and high quality early childhood and after school care and education system statewide. Through this work, we're providing training, technical assistance, coaching, and support to professionals in the field on COVID-related priority topics and issues. We're also working with local leads to assist with regional capacity to meet the changing needs of families, businesses, and communities by developing strategies and implementing local solutions to COVID-related challenges. And that has included the formation and facilitation of an e-community collaborative with regional representation from family resource centers and early childhood coalitions. In addition, we're working with ProSolutions to have customized training specific to COVID-related topics tied to social-emotional development, resiliency, and we hope to have a training package for directors and administrators. We're also going to be conducting a short survey on programs experiences with COVID from March to September of this year. So please be on the lookout for that survey as we hope to utilize that survey to assess programs experiences. Um, we've been working on a new website called New Hampshire Connections and this will be available late October, early November. We look forward to making this available to you and we're looking forward to telling you more about some of the upcoming key features that it will have to engage users such as the child care search portal, discussion threads, etc. And finally, a reminder that our 2020-2021 virtual annual training calendar is available right now for you on our website. It's a fluid document and it's updated regularly to reflect any changes or additions. Please share this with your staff and any other individual that you know who may be looking for professional development opportunities. So this concludes the Child Care Aware of New Hampshire update. And now we're going to move forward to any questions with Emma. Um, she's been collecting questions through the Zoom chat, and we're going to have those questions addressed as time out. Emma? Stephanie, um, there actually aren't any questions right now that anyone has. So okay. I was going to just give it like a minute, and if nothing else comes in, what we can do is, as always, you can send questions from this webinar to Child Care Aware or our ECCP mailbox. Um, I did just want to remind people, we said it in the beginning, um, our webinar in November is going to be a recorded webinar, not a live webinar, and it will be posted on Child Care Aware. We will be announcing the first week in November when that uh, webinar will be posted. Um, I just sent the email address, the CCRR um, email in the chat box. If you have any specific questions for public health, um, CCLU, uh, Bureau of Child Development, DEHS, Anything that you think you need answered, uh, please send it to that email with the subject line DHHS webinar question, and we will make sure to include it in our webinar recording. Great. And no Thank other you. questions are coming in, Stephanie. Okay. Well, to close, we would like to remind you to complete the session evaluation survey. This was included in your initial registration email for this webinar. This recording will be posted on the uh, childcareaware.org website under the page entitled Recovery and Stabilization under our COVID-19 tab. <laughs> and this page will be populated um, within one business day. A reminder, professional development hours will be provided to all those participants registered in the New Hampshire Professional Registry for an hour um, of training time. As a reminder, if you haven't already done so, please put your name and last name and your child care program in the chat feature and we'll be marketing 
your, um, we'll be marking your training transcript complete within two business days. If you are on the webinar and you're not an early childhood provider and are not within the New Hampshire Professional Registry, you can request documentation of your participation by emailing Donna Lake at ccrrtraining at southernnewhampshireservices.org. And for those participants who are viewing uh, a recording of this webinar, please use the self-study sheet found at the top of the training and webinar page on the Child Care Aware of New Hampshire website. As we leave you this afternoon, we hope this webinar has provided you with the necessary updates that you need to support your work with children, families, and your staff. We hope you're enjoying the beautiful fall foliage and you have a chance to drink some warm apple cider. Be safe and well. Thank you for your time and interest in this webinar series and enjoy the remainder of your afternoon.